Hi, let's get to work. Let's talk about the stationary action. Let's define the following functional. S is the action and it is a functional that depends on the Lagrangian, which itself depends on the coordinates x, the velocity, x dot, and time. This integral has units of energy multiplied by time. Remember that the Lagrangian has units of energy. We say it is a functional as it, de it depends on variables, but these variables are functions of time also. We want to ask the following question. Assuming the limits of integration are fixed, what are the functions x of t that give a stationary value of s? Remember that stationary means that the result is minimum, maximum, or it is a subtle point. For example, imagine that you want to go from a to b in the minimum amount of time. What would be the best path? Think also about light. When light goes from point A to point B, that's so minimizing the time. But when light enters a different medium, there is refraction. This in fact is minimizing the time of travel. If you are on the beach and want to rescue someone in the sea near the shore, uh, you don't want to run in a straight line to that person because you will run slower in the water than what you do on the sand. You want to make an angle just like light does. If you want to minimize your time, you have to find that balance between running on the sand faster than what you do on the water. To the function x of t that yields a stationary value of the action s between x1 and x2, we call it x0 of t. There is this theorem that says that x0 satisfies the following equation which is Euler-Lagrange equation. Let's demonstrate this theorem. If this function yields a stationary value, then any other function very close to x0 will yield the same value up to first order. The differences are at second order or higher. So we can write for that other function x of t close to x0 of t, x of t equal to x0 of t plus epsilon times eta of t, where epsilon is a number and eta of t, to keep the boundary points as fixed, needs to satisfy that eta of t1 is 0 and eta of t2 is also 0. But other than that, eta of t is an arbitrary function, so we have written the action for any function close to x0. Action for x0 is an extreme. Action for x of t depends on the parameter epsilon, but for x0 to make the action an extreme, the derivative of the action with respect to epsilon should be zero for x0, as this one makes s an extreme. So the partial of action of x of t with respect to epsilon is the partial with respect to epsilon of the integral between t1 and t2 of L dt, which using the chain rule we get epsilon affects the action through its dependence by x and x dot. Let's look back at the linearization of x of t and the corresponding x dot of t. From there, we see that the partial of x with respect to epsilon is eta of t, and the partial of x dot of t with respect to epsilon is eta dot. We can use these to rewrite the partial of s with respect to epsilon. Now, let me integrate by parts the second part of the integral. Because eta at the boundaries is zero, this last term vanishes and we get this other integral. Because for x naught this has to be zero, 
and eta is an arbitrary function. It has to be valid for any fancy eta you think of. Then, the integrand has to be zero itself. And this, my friends, yields Euler-Lagrange's equation. So Euler-Lagrange equations come from the fact that action is an extreme. They yield the same differential equations as f equal ma. So Newton's second law is equivalent to saying that nature likes stationary actions. And this takes us to the principle of stationary action. That says that the path of a particle is the one that yields a stationary value of the action. This principle is also known as Hamilton's principle or the principle of least action. This principle is equivalent to f equal ma. Remember the example for an arbitrary potential written in Cartesian coordinates that we solve we saw a couple of videos ago. So all we need to find the equation of motion is to write the Lagrangian and apply the principle of stationary action. This demonstration we did for just one variable is generalizable to any number of variables involved. And we'll see several examples of this. May the least action be with you.